My name is Janelle Weaver. I'm the chef owner of the Bewildered Pig Restaurant, which is located at what's considered the deep end of the Anderson Valley wine country on your way to the coast. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a simplified version of a complicated centuries old French popular dish called a boudin. Boudin is simply sausage, but we're gonna do a little different take on it. We're gonna make it a little bit more rustic so you can do it at home. I've been making this for years. It pairs great with Gewürztraminer because the Gewürztraminer will help to cut through the richness of the boudin. You can also season the boudin with all kinds of things to complement the wine if you've pre-chosen your wine. So it can go either way. Today we're using rabbit from our own farm that we harvested yesterday. And typically the rabbit is harvested for a more celebratory experience and it's made into something like a fricassee. We're gonna make a boudin with the belly flap um, and we're gonna make it equally as sumptuous and celebratory as the dish that this rabbit will go into. You don't have to do something super exotic like rabbit bellies. You can go and get some beautiful boneless, skinless chicken breast. You can do this with fish. So a beautiful white fish works well. Please keep in mind if you do decide to use fish, scallops, white fish, they cannot be previously frozen. That's very important if you're going to use fish. However, if you are going to use meat, previously frozen is fine. The protein structure is different, and so it's gonna act differently. If you get frozen fish, your, your boudin will not set. And you really want about 11 ounces. That can be 10 to 12 ounces. So I have close to 10 here, which works just fine. So we're gonna have our rabbit, our eggs, and our cream. So what we put in here is our 11-ish um, ounces of trimmed rabbit and three farm fresh eggs. But you can see that the pieces of meat are still relatively big and that looks like a really loose, almost uncooked pudding texture, which is fine. Just remember you have eggs in there that are going to set this whole mixture once it cooks. And now what we're gonna do is transfer it into a couple batches into the blender. I'm gonna start that on a low speed and gradually increase to high. And I'm gonna watch it until I get a nice smooth texture. So we have our, what we call a force meat, which is basically an emulsified protein that's done with some sort of fat. To the bowl, we are going to add our sauteed garlic and shallot with all those beautiful herbs that we picked from the garden. And I have these beautiful garlic chives. I'm gonna add a nice pinch of white pepper, freshly ground, salt. You can always test your seasoning. Remember, you can always add more. You cannot take away. When in doubt, add less. You do want it to be completely incorporated. Like we talked about earlier, a traditional boudin is a sausage and it is stuffed into sausage casings. Not everybody has that equipment, not everybody cares. So what I like to do is use some heavy duty saran wrap. This is probably the most important part of the rolling technique. I'm gonna take that first edge, I'm gonna bring it over and I'm gonna pull it back. And the goal here is I don't, I want to get rid of the air in there. So this is a delicate technique where I'm pulling, rolling, and pushing all at the same time. This is typically where you get a little seam mark, which is fine. This is me being a professional chef, being extra fussy about it. It's not a big deal. You don't want your t ends to taper. So this is really thin and you got a really thick center. In the end, when you tie it up, which we're gonna do in a minute, you wanna make sure that your boudin is equally thick from end to end. 
And the reason I'm giving it several layers is because I want to protect it from the heat. I want to protect the plastic. I don't want it to melt. And I don't want water to seep in because we're going to be poaching this. So I feel comfortable with that. Rolling in opposite directions to create a long seam and I can tuck it under. The tying technique is very important. You don't want to get water into your boudin, which is going to be poaching in a water bath. I'm going to get it as close as I can and I'm going to pull it really tight. Now here's where the technique comes in. And what I'm doing with my string is I'm going, I'm working my way in and I'm pulling really tight to force my meat mixture in and tight. And I'm going to go in the opposite direction on the other one. So I'm working that mixture in and I'm creating a longer line of protection for the water to not get into my boudin. Tight. Just a simple double knot is all it takes. You don't have to be as fussy, but I will just forewarn you, if you're not fussy with it and you get water in there, it's not my fault. And you need to practice the technique because it's centuries old. You're gonna wanna twist it up, because again, this is further protection for getting water into your boudin. If you wanna do it in sausage casings or you wanna wrap it in something permeable like call fat, you can do that, and that is traditional, and you poach it in a flavored bath of stock, um, which adds more to the flavor. So stock and wine, we could have added Gewürztraminer to it, but I'm wanting to do this this way. I can just poach it in water, and it makes it easy. So here I have my pan. I'm pouring really hot water into it. The water needs to pretty much submerge and cover and then I'm gonna take a clean towel to weigh it down and protect the plastic from melting, just in case. You don't wanna put it into the oven where the top heat is gonna be detrimental. So in this oven, I'm putting it on the bottom. Once boudin has reached 180 degrees in the oven, you're gonna pull it out and we're gonna cut each end off. And you see the fat and liquid coming out. Here we have our beautiful boudin. The other thing to consider when you're making boudin is it's gonna be a large sausage that you're gonna slice and sear. So when you slice it, you want it to be pretty. And the stuff that you see inside of the boudin is in French referred to as garniture, or garniture. Look how beautiful that is. The key to Searing off the boudin properly has a little bit of technique involved. Don't be scared. You can use whatever you like. I like the canola because it doesn't have a flavor to it. I want the flavor of the boudin to show up. When you put something to sear into a hot saute pan, such as this, that's not super nonstick, you wanna put it in gently and give it what I call a little shake. I'm gonna put another piece in, give it a little shake. This is gonna prevent it from sticking this is imperative when you're cooking fish. That's a whole nother subject. Little shimmy, little shimmy. If you're having a dinner party and you're searing off your boudin, you can just pre-sear this. Do one side, take it out, put it on your sheet pan and let it rest. When you're getting ready to serve dinner, you don't have to be away from your guests the whole time. You've seared off the side, don't sear off the other side. You've got plenty of moisture and beauty left in the product. You can just reheat it very quickly in the oven to serve. This way you can mingle with your guests and not have to worry about being in the kitchen the whole time. If you'd like to learn more about the fabulous wines of Anderson Valley or the annual Winter White Wine Festival, go to avwines.com. You'll find all the information you need there.